very fun way. Here's a famous one of these rhymes. And it goes, there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread, then whipped them off soundly and put them to bed. So many of these we learned when we were children. And I'm going to ask you right now, in your language, so we have different countries. We have at least five or six different countries today. So I'm wondering, do you have this kind of, there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. Do you have a version in your own language um, or, or native tongue or country that you're living in? So is there, do you know about this in Portuguese or Spanish or um, Russian? Or have you heard about this? Because sometimes these rhymes and chants are good as well because we learn them in our own language as well. Um, so if, if this is the case, then this is really great because then the students get an idea of the language behind it. But as you can see, this is difficult language. So some of the difficult language, what is some of the difficult language in here that the children may have never heard of? Some of the, the vocabulary. Well, I can tell you right away, they're probably not going to understand what broth is. <laughs> and there is an idiom in here as well. It's this one right here. They whip them off soundly. Whip them off soundly. Do you know what that is? So basically, this is an, a way of saying that she spanked them. <laughs> isn't that ta isn't that terrible? <laughs> and then she put them to bed. So there's um, also here. There's a, a, a phrasal verb um, as well. So it's really great to teach language. And you can see an old drawing of this classic rhyme. And you see the, the shoe, the big shoe, and the woman living there. So you can introduce this through a story. They may have a story for little tiny kids. Um, but the question might be, well, why teach with chance? Well, so there's a few reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is because, like we saw, it taught some vocabulary, some idioms. It teaches a lot about the culture of English as well, depending on the country. Um, it usually gives a lesson or a moral, um, or it has an association, a lesson or moral association. It's great to teach grammar points. It's compare, uh, sometimes it's comparable in the native language. It's fun repetition, so it's a type of drilling, but it's, it's really fun. It, you learn sentence formation. It's fun repetition, again, and it's cultural. So, hmm, how will I teach words, the words of a chant? How will I teach the meaning? And how will I teach the gestures? Because all of that, all of those are considerations when you're teaching chants. So one of the things that I think is great is a felt board. I love felt boards. And when you, oh, well, welcome, Delaine. Delaine says that I probably pronounced that wrong. Um, the, she says it's her first time here, so welcome. <laughs> Um, you use a felt board, and the felt board, you can put characters up there. Uh, with that particular one, you could put the little old woman, you could put a shoe, you could put something like, um, you could put it having to go all of them into bed, um, lots and lots of children. You could keep adding more and more children, and it's great for the children to get involved as well. You can do sequencing events with the felt board, so it's a great way to teach the language. Um, you can model some of the gestures. So a lot of the chants we're going to see today, you can actually use TPR with. You can put gestures. So here is a rhyme. This isn't a chant, but this is a rhyme. Um, can you tell me which rhyme this one is that I'm modeling here? I'll give you a clue. <laughs> Yes, yeah, very good, Camila. She said it in uh, head, shoulders. Yes, Ola, very good. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yay. See, so we can model the gestures, and um, our students can figure this out, too. You can demonstrate with flashcards as well. Um, and flashcards are a great way to show them. And this is me with one of my students. 
who is sitting quite lovely in the chair. <laughs> you can show a video, the Wiggles. Uh, my students love watching the Wiggles perform all of these. This one is, uh, you may not be able to see it that well, but it's um, the Wiggles performing. It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. <laughs> and that's their favorite rhyme to see because because he pours rain on the other wiggles. <laughs> so you can this. So um, these are good places to find some rhymes and chants, but there's plenty more. I'll give you Oh, recording. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm back. I'm going to share my webcam, but then I'm going to pause it so that way it doesn't take as much. So let me give you a great smile. <laughs> Okay, so that should help with the bandwidth. So kididdles.com is a great way to, um, to find a lot of these rhymes and chants. And it gives you, kididdles also gives you, um, as well, it gives you an MP3 with it, but the MP3 doesn't have any words, so it's great to go along with it. Bussongs.com is another one um, that's really fantastic. And I'm putting it in the chat box. And they have videos as well. And then there's so many that I have. Um, okay, so let's talk about the game part. So the best, so we can introduce the rhymes and chants and stuff. But one of the great things to do is actually to play a game with it. How many of you have seen this game before, which is the Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick, Jack Jump Over the Candlestick? Well, one of the ways you play is you actually can put books instead of the candle. And the kid... Um, they try and they jump over the book or a pillow. Sometimes they get pillows as well. And every time they do that, you have all the kids run and jump. And they sing. They have to chant this, the song together uh, in a group. And you can hear us here maybe. So at the count of three, I'm going to get everyone here to start um, saying this rhyme with me. And they can see the words on the screen. And usually I would show the words on the board. So here we go at the count of three. So all of you join me. One, two, three. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump over the candlestick. <laughs> and when we say Jack jump over the candlestick, that's when the student has to run and jump over the candlestick or over the book. Um, but the other thing is every time they're able to do that, they stack it higher and higher and higher. And you get the whole class asking, do you think, you know, Jack's going to be, you can get one student to volunteer to do the jumping, or you can have them all go one after the other and sing. Um, another great benefit of this is it tires them out. <laughs> um, but then you can teach them words, nimble and quick. Jump over, which is, uh, and then you can even teach a grammar point of prepositions if you want as well. See how fun that is? Um, Yes, I could show you that one of those maybe afterwards. Um, there's another one called Ring Around the Rosies. And the, the way we sing Ring Around the Rosies is Ring Around the Rosies, a pocket full of posies. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. So I'm going to show you uh, what that looks like. I'm actually going to ask the people in this room to do Ring Around the Rosies with me. The not Hakel because her uh, leg is hurting. So here we go. So maybe you can see us. <laughs> and so you get in a circle. Can you see us? And then we go, ring around the rosy, a pocket full of rosy. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. <laughs> OK, so you saw us play that. <laughs> so that's another game. Um, and if you don't fall down, then you're supposed to be out. But Nobody's ever out. We just keep going. Um, there's another one that's very popular as well. It's not on here, but it's London Bridge is uh, falling down. And with London Bridge, you hold to each other and you pretend you're a bridge, and people walk under. And you say, London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. And then when it falls down, you have the person in the middle, and you shake them back and forth. Um, but these are really great grammar points to, to share as well. 
sometimes people associate the Ring Around the Roses with fire, and it teaches about a fire, the great big fire that happened in the past in London, or a fire that can associate, you can associate with a history. Um, these are my trainees this week. They actually jump rope. So we play jump rope games. You can see the jump rope right there. Jump roping is a great way to get them to drill in a fun way. Here's a very good one. It says, A, my name is Alice. And they fill this in part. And they're going through the entire alphabet, the class. And then one of the students goes. And each student goes, and they have to do it together. And they sing, A, my name is Alice. But they fill it in themselves. My brother, sister, they can say their brother or their sister, their mother or their father. It's up to them. Name is Al. We live in Alabama, and we bring back apples. You could say anything they want, but this is an idea. So they say, A, my name is Alexandra. My sister's name is, uh, my brother's name is Arnold. We live in Austin. Argentina, and we bring back armadillos. <laughs> that makes no sense at all. <laughs> B, my name is Bill. My sister name is Bertha. We live in Brazil, and we bring back bananas. And you keep going and going and going. This is a creative way to do a gap fill. You notice it's a gap fill? But this is much better than doing the gap fill on the worksheet. <laughs> There's other ones as well. But if you looked at that one, what are we teaching? Well, we're teaching the alphabet. We're teaching nouns. They have to fill in different nouns. Family. We're teaching about the family. It's a gap fill. We teach plural form. Uh, we teach possessive, the possession as well. My name is. Um, my brother's name is my father's. You know how difficult it is for students to get the plural forms, but they can do it there. And the simple present. Okay? Here's another one that's very popular as well. I love this picture of them jumping. You can have more than one student jump at the same time. You can have as many people as you want jump. Uh, but they seem to like this one a lot. I teach it with the felt board. I have Cinderella on the felt board, and she's dressed in a nice, pretty yellow dress. And what we do is we say, um, it goes, Cinderella, dressed in yellow, went upstairs to kiss a fellow, made a mistake, and kissed a snake. How many doctors did it take? One, two, three, and they keep jumping and jumping and jumping until they make a mistake, and then we have to start it again with another one. Uh, but it teaches them counting. Um, you can show them the colors, uh, the difference between you. It has a rhyme, mistake, and snake. Oh no, you wouldn't want to kiss a, a snake instead of a fellow. <laughs> um, and then the numbers. You can have them do the numbers. One, two, three, four. There are hand clapping games as well. And I'm going to get uh, one of the, the best hand clappers in the world to help me here. <laughs> uh, I usually show this on a big projector screen so they can see this while they're doing the clapping game. Um, but this is called um, a sailor went to. OK, so I'm going to sing it to you first. It goes, a sailor went to see, 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 to see what he could see, see, see. But all that he could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see. This does have hand gestures and a great video by the Wiggles as well, OK? Uh, but it goes, a sailor went to uh, see, 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 to see what, to see what he could see, see, see. Or you can do this. Um, but all that he could see, see. Was the bottom of the deep blue sea, sea, sea. Okay, so here we go. Uh, you don't have any sound? Can everybody hear me? I hope so. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to go ahead and do it here. <laughs> okay, so Masia is going to help me. The way we're going to do it is we get, if you can see the clapping movement, I'll move to move back. 
<laughs> okay, so here we go. We got a sailor went to he difficult. That's one of the simplest claps that they have. And actually, Juliana showed me that because I was doing another kind. I was doing, I'll have to show you this kind as well. <laughs> so I was, I was doing this one. Oh, okay. Can we go this way, Juliana? So this is Juliana. Hello. And I was doing this one. The, oh, yeah. Wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Hello. Okay. Okay. Oh, you. No, I'm not doing have to teach me. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> okay, so you see that one was much more difficult. And that's the one I kept trying to do in my training. So I, I taught them the more difficult one. Um, but you can get even more difficult than that. And the way that I do the hand caught games is I actually watch it on YouTube first. And then after watching on YouTube is when I get to do the claps with them. Um, okay, so maybe that one's better. Um, Ola, you might need to take off the video. Um, there are other games you can play with chants and rhymes. This is Red Rover, Red Rover. Um, so you can see there's two lines here. There's one big line here, one big line. And the idea is that you, the kids are going to chant you're going to see it right here. They're going to chant, Red Rover, Red Rover, let, and then they say the person's name right over. This is a famous children's game in America. And so they can say the person's name. To make it much better for language learning, this is what I have them do. I say, Red Rover, Red Rover, let those with, with, um, with, jean shorts right over, or those with blue hats right over, or those with blue, with white shirts right over, okay? So I add the adjective and the category. And it's a great way to teach, um, it, it teaches sentence structure, but also in a lot of languages, the adjective and the noun is switched. So this is a great way to teach that with the students as over, with glasses exactly on it. Um, and so you let the students fill this out as well. And so what happens is that when you're standing in the line, so we'll go back over here, this group of children will start singing, Red Rover, Red, will chant, Red Rover, Red Rover, let those with the white shirt, those with the white shirt right over. And so this girl will have to run all the way over there, and she'll have to try and ba break through their hands. And if she breaks through their hand, then they, she gets to join the circle. But if she doesn't, then she has to go back to her. Okay? So this is how it goes. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, that's one game. You can play them in circles as well, or you can play them in chairs. This one is called Who Stole the Cookie from the Cookie Jar. Um, and the way this is is that you actually can have, like, a fake cookie toy, or you can have a student draw the cookie, and then the way you go is, uh, it goes like this, who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? And the person who has the cookie is the person who is it, so usually it's the teacher, so let's say that I have this cookie, and actually I do have a cookie, oh. so <laughs> I have a real cookie that I am going to eat in a little bit, sorry about that. <laughs> so, who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? Shelly stole the cookies from the cookie jar. And then, um, well, actually, that everybody thinks that Shelly stole the cookie from the cookie jar because that's my name. And then um, I'll say, who, me? And then they say, yeah, you. And they point to me. And then I would say, couldn't be. And then the group thinks, then who? And then I go back to that circle. Let's go look at that circle again. And I run around, and I tag someone, and I give them the cookie. 
And then we all start singing again. Who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? And let's say that uh, Marcia here has the cookie now. So then we say, Marcia stole the cookie from the cookie jar. And she's going to say, who, me? And yeah, you! <laughs> Not me, it couldn't be. Hakel did. And who? Hakel did. <laughs> and then we all sing Hakel. But she would have to run and she would have to drop the cookie by Hakel. Uh, you can play to. Usually with a chair, it works a little bit better because then they can't see when the when the person dropped it underneath them, okay? Um, so then one of the things that I do, because I want them to play it at home, and they want to play these games at home. They want to practice English and play at home. So we put the lyric, I put the lyrics and the video on a wiki or a blog to share with students and parents. And I like to find a video of kids doing it. So that way they can see the gestures as well in case they forget the hand movements or the gestures and stuff. And, um, sorry, I'm just a little bit hungry there. <laughs> um, but that will help with the parents as well. And that's about it for our presentation today. Um, and you can find all the links and the chants and everything here at tinyurl.com. Uh, ELT links. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll let you um, have them in the front. And yes, I jump along with my students as well. <laughs> so um, if you would, ha if you have any questions, yes, I do. Um, Anna Maria asked, do you have a wiki with any of the chants today? And so you can get um, an idea of what this is. I will show it to you. Um, Unfortunately, it doesn't have all the videos because when um, Yahoo updated itself, it uh, made it to where the videos disappeared. But I'll get those. And I will put the links inside as well for the bit.ly address. Um, do you have any favorite rhymes or chants that you like to use with your students? You can put them in the chat box right now, and we will see them. So here we go. Um, there's finger plays as well. But that's my wiki with the kids that I have. Nellie the elephant. Do you have a link to that? I don't think I've seen Nellie the elephant, uh, James. And then if you wanted to the, um, actually let me do the tiny URL as well. I changed the address. It used to be bit.ly, but I like tiny URL better now, but you'll still find the bit.ly links as well there to all of them and the recordings in case you miss anything. Okay, so James says uh, it goes, Nellie the elephant packed her trunk and said goodbye to the circus. Kamula likes the itsu bitsu spider. And Nellie the elephant, okay, so off she went with the trumpety trump trump trump. Oh, that sounds cute. Okay. Well, thank you, James, for sharing that one. <laughs> Anyone else?